this one is actually it's a TV number 85, uh, but you know this one is actually came out of uh, Middle East, I believe they, they, they dragged that back. Oh, this was an Israeli capture? I don't think it was an Israeli. I think it, but it came out of, out of Middle East somewhere. Okay. It was built in Poland. It was built in Poland. Oh, so this is a post-war bill. Okay. Poland was Bosnia. He was a uh oh, somebody get the six pound sledge to change the cheeky arm and change the gears. Feel the power! Feel the power! like mama used to make. That's Russian perfume. <laughs> When we had the abortive adventure on the beaches in Cuba called the Bay of Pigs, Castro rode Ford in T-34-85s and SU-100s, which are a version of the T-34 with a 100 millimeter cannon mounted in a case bank. T-34 is not particularly easy to drive. Some of them that have particularly bad transmissions were issued with their own personal sledgehammer so that you can shift the gears. Interestingly, I like to tell people that this is one of the <coughs> coolest tanks ever designed by an American. Now some people will say, oh no, Richard's on something, he's messed up now. No, no. A guy named Walter Christie, he come up with an idea, you see tanks in World War II? All right, everybody, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> It is a World War II tank. You know, that was, what, 70 years ago? Um, Walter Christie came up with an idea where you could take a tank, an armored tank, like you've seen in World War I, and make it a lot faster. You got a 6 miles an hour, 8 miles an hour. How about 45 miles an hour? How about 50 miles an hour? You took these big road wheels, on springs that went up and down vertically on the side of the hull. And then no extension unit like most bars going across the hull. What do you do with all that extra space? That's pretty much anything you want. You throw a lot of ammo in the tank. You do a good action. You can make it a lot of the hull. And here's the motion. Oh, 
one, man.